top of our lungs. There's a sound breaking now, Lord, for all that you've done. And now we're turning our, turning our hearts to you. And no, we'll never stop, never stop loving you. And this will be the best time of
Thank you guys. We are so blessed to have you guys here this Sunday. And um, we are doing a couple things. So starting December 17th, we are doing Joy for All, which is a Christmas benefit concert. So we want you guys to be here Sunday, December 17th at 4 o'clock p.m. Information is right over there and in the hub. And then on December 24th, we're going to have our Christmas family celebration. So make sure to bring your family, invite your friends, and get the word out. And then on December 31st, we're doing our candlelight service for our new year. Isn't that exciting? It's already 2018. So with that said, do we have any new people in the house? Welcome. Welcome to those we haven't seen in a while, too. We're so blessed to have you guys here. We're actually going to... a. Oh, welcome, welcome. I know we have a new baby in the house, so welcome. <laughs> Praise God. Um, we also want to thank those that have donated to Happy Feet. You guys are making a difference for those this Christmas, the pastors in the Philippines. And speaking of pastors, we have an announcement that's not listed on here. If I could just ask all our pastors to stand up. You pastors, can you stand up? We want to appreciate you guys. We have three pastors right there. We want to thank you guys for the way that you constantly serve the Lord and serve Cross Culture Church. Last month was Pastor Appreciation Month, and we haven't forgotten about you. We have a gift for you, but first we just want to pray for you. Can you guys just stretch your hands? Jesus, we thank you for these pastors here. Lord, we thank you for the way that you have placed such a calling in their lives to serve you, to serve your people, to serve their families. God, we just pray for favor, for grace for your word to penetrate through the very depths of their heart, God, and for you to do whatever you have to do, God, to make sure that they are glorifying your name. God, we thank you for their lives. We ask that you would bless them, bless their household, Lord, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you, pastors. We love you. We appreciate you, and we're so excited to expand God's kingdom even more with you. So with that said, let's all rise and let's just welcome one another. God bless you guys. Here and now, make it loud at the top of our lungs. There's a sound breaking now, Lord, for all that you've done. And now we're turning our, turning our hearts to you. And no, we'll never stop, never stop loving you. This will be the best time of our life as we can your love again. This is our moment to lift your name. This is our time. This is our place. This is our moment to lift your name. This will be the best time of our lives as we encounter your love again. Here in you, our hearts will come alive as we declare your praises. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. 
We recognize your goodness, your love, the ways you have moved in our lives. Sometimes we, we are not conscious of your sovereign hand over our lives. Lord, this morning we just begin to recollect, remember the good things that you have done for us and to recognize all your, the good things your protection, your provision, the help that you've given us, the pains that we learn from, we can know and, and 
value life. Lord, we sang the song, we love you, Lord. Because you first loved us. And our love for you is a response to what you've already done for us. You are worthy of our admiration and appreciation, Lord. You are worthy. This week, many flocked to those malls and stores in appreciation for the price you brought. But Lord, we appreciate you because you came from heaven and, and dropped everything and became human. And, and the price that you paid on the cross is worthy of our appreciation. Lord Jesus, we honor you in this place. Oh God, we just welcome you to come into in our midst and invade our lives, dear God, and touch us where we are weak, make us strong. Where we have fall, fallen, make us rise. Where we have doubt, give us faith. Can we just lift up our hands to the Lord this morning? Every one of us here, uh, I believe, represents a need. We, we came here uh, with a need that only God alone uh, can provide. No one else, nothing else. Lord, fill the emptiness of our hearts because, Lord, any burden that is in our hearts, Lord, is something that you want to fill, that only you can fill. And Father God, this is our time. This is the time and this is the place and this is the moment that we want to lift up your name over those things. And, and Lord, we express our appreciation and admiration and our praise to you because you are the only one worthy of all of all praise and admiration. And dear God, we praise, we praise you. We thank you that we can have this freedom to express our love for you. And Lord, meet every need this morning. The needs of everyone here finances, it may be um, peace of mind, it may be provision, Lord, it may be a conclusion to an impending case or whatever, Lord. And Lord, you are, we put our hope and trust in you, you are our hope. And Lord, beyond us, there are people that need your touch and help us, Lord, to be an avenue for your blessing. Lord, we pray, Lord, for our country, that Lord, you will bless our nation with spiritual shield of protection, that no evil intents will prevail against us. And we pray, dear God, to, from, from the White House and Jailhouse, Lord, that your, your word will be uh, made manifest and be pro proliferated. Lord. Preaching of the gospel will be in every corner of America. And Lord, use our nation to spread the gospel wherever it is needed. And we thank you, Lord, that you've granted our church to be a part of that. And Lord, we thank you for this morning. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Well, Thanksgiving just passed. And we are in, on our way to the high holidays, they call it. You know, Christmas, Christmas party, New Year, and all of those things. But if, if, you will, if, if I would think about what the season is all about, there are just two things. Most in, in people's minds, it's a cost. This high holiday is going to cost you money. How many, how many knows that you're, going, you're expecting to spend a lot this holiday? Right? And some of you already spent your budget for the next five years. Um, and also, the next one is calories. Calories. Yeah, during Christmas, you spend a lot and you, and you have lots of calories. But let us refocus on, on what is Christmas. What, who caused Christmas? What's the cost of Christmas? The cost of Christmas is about Jesus Christ. So let's, let's look at the cost of Christmas. So on, our, on December 17, I'd like to read, read from the announcement. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the angel said to Mary, I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. That means joy is for all the people. So we want to bring the good news because it's all for all people. It's not just for a few. It's not just for those people who know about Jesus Christ. But this whole December, we will know the good news of great joy. So uh, invite your friends to come for our concert. We have a wonderful stuff uh, in line for you. And you will just have a, a, a bigger eye view of 
the cost of Christmas. It was Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus, you know. It's not about calories. It's not about, about the cost that you're going to spend this Christmas because it's joy for all. Amen. Morning, everyone. All right. Thanksgiving is over. Now what? <laughs> uh, money is over too. <laughs> no more money for Christmas. All right. Um, it's Christmas season. Start of Advent. Let me just ask you a few questions. Who here started decorating for Christmas? All right. Everyone stop. <laughs> like four, five. Who never took down last year's decorations? <laughs> All right. Don't worry. Oh, there's our, there are some. All right. Who, um, can you believe Thanksgiving is over and only um, Christmas is 29 days away? 29 days away. Feels like time is sweeping by. One of the only times that the, or one of the few times that it is slow, I remember a friend of mine would always Whenever he listens to the word of God, he feels like the, the time is very, very slow. He'd be like, oh, what time will this end? That's the only time that the, the, the time is very slow. And he would be looking at his watch and thinking, come on, I'm hungry. But you see, the rule of thumb for, for most households is that they don't get start or they don't start getting ready for Christmas after Thanksgiving, Right? I like to take my holidays one at a time. I'm not holding anything against those who have been ready for months, but you may have a problem. For those who have started, you may have a problem. You may be addicted to Christmas, which can result in what we call Christmasitis. Have you heard of that? <laughs> Christmasitis. Well, I just, just made up. Well, if you are in doubt about this, I have come up with uh, some questions that would make you think if you have this, uh, if you have contracted this disease. Give yourself a point for every question you answer. Yes to. First is, do you have more than two giant inflatable lawn decorations? No. No. Filipinos are cheap. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, do you buy any of this year's Christmas presents? At the after Christmas sales last year? Or did you buy any of your decorations after the Christmas sale last year? Right? Do you leave your Christmas lights up all year and try to pass them off as lights to celebrate other holidays? Some would, some be, I would be asking, so why are there Christmas lights here? Oh, no, it's for my birthday. When's your birthday? Like August. I was like, what? All right. Now, have you ever bought an artificial tree because real ones don't last for three months? Mm -hmm. Now, have you started buying your Christmas gifts since July of this year? No one? Or earlier and just stuck it up on your uh, garage. Anyway, this is what we do after Thanksgiving or during Thanksgiving or even before Thanksgiving. But after Thanksgiving, what do we do now? It's, it's Christmas season. It's the, what they call holiday season. How do we um, transition from Thanksgiving to Christmas? I'm going to submit to you today five commandments in transitioning. Right? First one, let's, let's start this off with the first one. It's called Shout for Joy. And I'll be using Psalm chapter 100 verses 1 to 5 for for the whole teaching. So the first one, the first commandment for transitioning from Thanksgiving to Christmas is that we have to shout for joy. Psalm 100 verse 1 says, Make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all you lands. So this commandment is for everyone. It says, all you lands. It didn't say, make a, shout, make a joyful shout unto the Lord, some of you. But it says, all you lands. In the, trans, uh, the Passion Translation, it says, lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. Go ahead and do it. 
everyone and everywhere. So a great shout of joy comes from a thankful heart. Now, if you if you um, if you're done with Thanksgiving, being thankful for for anything or for everything, you have to continue that because this shout of joy comes from a thankful heart with enthusiasm. It'll be hard to do this if you're very busy thinking about your Christmas list or because of your Christmas sightings, right? Now, I suggest the best thing that you can do or the best thing that we can do in order for us to shout for joy is that you pause for a while. You pause for a while in, your, in the way you think about Christmas. Um, in the praise or, or pause for praise for Christ in the midst of craziness in this season. Slow down. I'm sure some of you have st are still looking at the sales. The after Thanksgiving sale or tomorrow will be the, the what? Cyber Monday. See, everyone knows because everyone is checking, right? Everyone is checking. Try sometime, try in the middle of your, of your um, busy checking this sale. You slow down, pause for a while, and then let your thankful heart intensify as Christmas approaches. Think about who Jesus is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, it says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. You see, some of us grumble about the holidays and we complain uh, uh, about people beginning or that begin or that began preparing for Christmas earlier this year. Right? Some people would say, you know the Instagram, in Instagram story, you would see who has Christmas trees already. Or, or in the in Instagram, uh, the, the post, you would see, oh, Merry Christmas. It's September, Merry Christmas. It's October, Merry Christmas. And you see the Christmas trees. And I saw someone, uh, like two days ago, a uh, bear tree. And then the next picture, Christmas tree or something like that. But the thing here is that some of us would even think, why, are you, why do you have Christmas tree? It's not yet Thanksgiving. You know, we fuss all about the, all the activities and the expenses that the seasons bring into our lives. Some, some people who does your budget, I'm sure you are, some of you are stressed out right now. Because you're, either your spouse or yourself are like buying all these things. And they still have those tags like from the previous month. They still have those tags in their cabinets or in their closets. But you see, and I'm not surprised if some of us have stress ulcers because of this. You know, for those who, who does their budget. But whether we like it or not, my friends, the holiday season is here. And for Christians, it is a time to render thanks to God for his wonderful blessings in our lives. Don't be focused on Christmas gifts or um, on, on, on the food that you're going to do. Or, or the Christmas parties that you're going to attend. But, but be aware of his wonderful blessings in our lives. It is a time to celebrate God for his giving us the gift of God's son for our salvation. And Paul calls it indescribable. Indescribable. It's like saying Jesus is a gift so good, so wonderful, that he can't describe it at all. It's that, isn't that a cause for us to make a joyful shout unto the Lord? For many, it is, it, I'm sure some of us, it's hard time of the year. Because loved ones have passed or have been taken in death. Or some of your loved ones is in another country. Others are going through times of financial or, or physical or emotional distress. You might even look around you and find little reason for rejoicing. You know, those wars, those killings. But if you will take time to consider who you are and all you have in Jesus, you will soon find that you possess a lot of reasons to be thankful for, for abundant thanksgiving. Again, maybe in the middle of your shopping or in the middle of thinking what gifts to give to others. Sit down and read Christmas story. 
remind yourself of what this Christmas story is all about. Or during Christmas dinner, stop and then tell the Christmas story. And just remind yourself or remind everyone that this is not about giving gifts, not just giving gifts. It's about Jesus, the birth of Jesus, the one who, who saved us from sins. Ponder them in your heart, and again, engage in some stories of Jesus. And once we shout for joy, we go to the next commandment, which is serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. In Psalm 100, verse 2, it says, serve the Lord with gladness. Jesus started in heaven and came down to earth in flesh as a servant submitting to death. Right? Let me repeat that. Jesus started in heaven, came down to earth in flesh as a servant submitting to death. We sometimes think of Christmas as very tame holiday. Right? Because you see the baby in a manger, Mary and Joseph, the sheep, the shepherds. And, and, and Jesus is just laying there, right? Everyone loves that because it's not harmful or it's, it's, it's safe. But you see, Christmas is not safe at all. That baby is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he has come to usher in a kingdom that rivals the kingdom of self. That's threatening. Because if... We believe in, in ourselves, right? We believe in ourselves so much that this Jesus is asking us to follow him and obey him wholeheartedly. He even said to take up your cross daily, to lay aside your own right to rule yourselves and to surrender to his rule. You see, the world loves to celebrate the birth of Christ but they hate to obey him as the Lord of their lives. Everyone wants to keep Christ in the manger. But the manger is meaningless apart from the cross. As one writer put it many years ago, this little babe so few days old is come to rifle Satan's fold. As hell doth at his presence quake, Though he himself for cold does shake. Um, th there's a story of an African boy listen, that listened carefully as his teacher explained why Christians give gifts to other people. All right? Or give presents to each other on Christmas Day. The teacher said, the gift is an expression of our joy over the birth of Jesus and our friendship for each other. So that's the teacher's definition of, of gift giving. Is an expression of our joy over the birth of Jesus and our friendship for each other. So when Christmas Day come, this boy brought the teacher a seashell, just a seashell. And then the teacher asked, where did you ever find such a beautiful shell? The teacher asked. Then the youth told her that there was only one spot where such extraordinary shells could be found. And when he named the place... Like a certain bay several miles away, the teacher was left speechless. She said, it's, it's gorgeous, it's wonderful, but you shouldn't have gone all that way to get the gift for me. You see, the, the, boy's, the boy's eyes brightened and the boy answered, long walk, part of gift. Right? Long walk, part of gift. God came from heaven to a manger. From a manger to the cross. From a cross to the grave. And from grave back to heaven. And we ask, why all this trouble, God? And God would say to us, long walk, part of gift. You see, Christmas is a time for serving the King of Kings. In the Lord of Lords. Service takes on a new meaning when done without acknowledgement. When done so that no one knows. Serve with gladness. Take a step of intentional demotion by serving others. Or serving someone who can't pay back in return. Pray for them. 
show hospitality to these people. Become a secret servant. I challenge you to become a secret servant. Do it because you know that Jesus loves you. So whatever you do, the command is to serve the Lord with gladness. After we serve the Lord with gladness, let's sing for joy, which is the third point. Sing for joy. When you realize that God has been good to you, and even you, when you serve him, you find, you find it rewarding. The tendency is you can't keep the joy inside of you anymore. So the depths from the depths of your being, you sing for joy unto the Lord. You see, joy is, is the natural result of a heart burning with love. Have you ever had those happy moments where you just say, hallelujah, or you know those people when, they, uh, when you say something good and they will sing, hallelujah, hallelujah. it's too high, but you know those, those we, we sing songs like that, we sing, you would hear some people would whistle because they don't know how to sing, they carry a tune, but they will whistle because they were so, they're so happy, and this is this should be the normal reaction. We sing for joy once we know that God has been good to us. Luke 2. I'm sorry, that is in Psalm 100 verse 2. Come before his presence with singing. And in Luke chapter 2 verse 10, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Take a moment and think for your, or think wh whether you whether or not you are happy. Think. Is there delight in your spirit right now? Is there thrill in singing songs of worship? Like a while ago, we were singing songs. Is there like a thrill that you're singing these songs to Jesus? Or is it just like singing because you just want to hear your voice? How good your voice is? Or something like that. You see, we have to sing for joy. Christmas trees and exchanging of gifts are, are fine. But if we do all that stuff, but don't talk about Jesus. If we fail to speak of the real meaning of it all. If we neglect to tell someone that this child was born as Savior and Lord. That he was sent by God to die on the cross to purchase with royal blood on our own deliverance from sin and death and the devil, if we neglect to publish that everywhere, we failed to do the Christ, the, to Christmas right. The angel said that this is good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. So let us share the, the joy. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A cheerful heart, is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And when you sing for joy, the next commandment is that know who is the shepherd and who are the sheep. Know. Know who is the shepherd and who are the sheep. In Psalm, in the verse 3 of Psalm 100, it says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You see, God made us inside and out. God made us. He made you the way he wanted you to be. And he made me the way he wanted me to be. That is a mystery. Isn't it? If I don't understand why, but somehow in God's providence, he dis decided that way. So he wanted me to have a receding hairline, if you can't see it. Praise God. He, he made me with eyes, without glasses, I can see five feet in front of my face. He didn't make me a doctor. He didn't make me a nurse. Praise God. Because I hate blood, the sight of blood. I hate it. I hate needles. Or he didn't give me a brain to invent new, new appliance or whatever. Right? But, but he made me to be a speaker. He made me to be a spiritual caregiver. He made me a pastor. And he's still making me. He is not satisfied with me yet. So he's still working on my weakness. He's still fine-tuning my gifts. And I am un I'm still unfinished product. Now what is he making you to be 
God is still making each of us. If you have any problems right now, if you're stressed with problems, if you're stressed with anything, know that God is not yet done with you. God is our maker and we are created in his image. Therefore, let's give him thanks for what we can become. Let's, let, let, let us continue to give him thanks. Most people, it says here, um, it says in the verse, know who is the shepherd and who are the sheep. You know who is the shepherd, right? It's Jesus. We are the sheep. But you know, most people don't want to be sheep. I remember uh, as a kid in, in the Christmas day, everyone wanted to be the shepherd or, or, or Jesus or Mary or Joseph, but not the sheep. No one would want to volunteer as a sheep. Why? I don't know. Because the sheep doesn't do anything. They're just like there. Right? The problem is, if you don't want to be the sheep, you don't even know where the green pastures are. And every time we go out searching for them, we end up lost in the wilderness. And that's why you're still having problems from the past. Because you don't know who the shepherd is. You want to be the shepherd of your life. But we are not the shepherd. We are just the sheep. The essence of Christmas, or my point is, the recognition that he is God. Recognize that he is God and we are not. Simple as that. He is our shepherd and we are the sheep. And the last commandment. Surrender with thanksgiving and praise. My favorite part. Surrender with thanksgiving and praise. Verses 4 and 5 of that same chapter in, in Psalm 100. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Good thing about this psalm is that the psalmist gives us the reason why we do it, right? Why we need to surrender with thanksgiving and praise. It's not because we want something out of him or, or it's not because he gave you a better job or provided you with stuff throughout the year. We do it because the Lord is good. The Lord is good. We do it because of his steadfast love and enduring patience experience, not just for us, but for our children and our children's children. See how faithful God is. We do it because of his promised grace on us. We do it because the promise is not based on our obedience, but because Jesus was obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, so that we are secure by faith so that we are secure by the truth of that promise. You see, my friends, I suggest this is the fifth commandment to surrender. To surrender. Why, why do we need to surrender? Because I believe Christmas is all about surrender. Christmas is all about surrender. Jesus surrendered heaven to come on to earth. Joseph and Mary surrendered their life plans to care for the Son of God. The shepherds surrendered their work one winter's night to see if what the angels had announced was more than a dream. The wise men surrendered their time at home to make a pilgrimage to discover the newborn king. You see, Christmas is all about surrender. Let me finish up with this story. Once there was a very rich young man. He lived in a very big house, like 20 rooms, big rooms in a mansion. 20 big rooms, beautiful, very beautiful rooms. You see all those, those paintings, you see all those chandeliers, or you see the, the stairs like filled with gold. And then one day, this young man, he invited Jesus he invited Jesus or he invited the Lord to come home and stay with him. And when the Lord arrived, this young man offered him the very best room. He said, Jesus, this is your room. The farthest on the left, that will be your room. That's the biggest room. That's the most 
beautiful room, you can do whatever you want in that room because that is yours. Right? He was so happy. Very happy that he, he was like, yes, Jesus said yes. Now that evening, this young man, after be, like when he was sleeping, like around midnight, he, he heard like a loud knocking at the front door. So of course, as the, as the owner, he went down. He went down. And then he opened the door. He found the devil with three of his angels. Right? And then they want to attack the man. So they're trying to open the door. But this guy, this young man, tried to stop. That, uh, for them to open the door tried really hard tried really hard to stop um, from that door to be open of course sometime later after a great struggle he managed to slam the door shut and return to his room totally exhausted exhausted and he was like can you believe that Jesus is upstairs in my very best room sleeping while I am down here battling demons. Oh, maybe he did, just did it here. You know, my ba- my house is like super big. So he slept, he slept that night. The next day went along like, you know, like a normal day. Now because he was still kind of tired, he slept early that evening. But again, about, that mid- about midnight again, um, there came such a, like, a crazy knock on the door. Like you, you, when you hear it, it feels like that door will be um, will be destroyed in like seconds. So he ran down as fast as he could, ran down as fast as he could to to like check who's opening that or who's banging that door again. And then he saw Satan again. Now this time. With like 20 angels with him. 20 demons with him. Stronger, like stronger. For more than three hours he fought and struggled against the demon from hell. And finally, finally overtook them enough to shut the door again. Against their attack. Of course, he was very tired. Again, he asked. Why won't the Lord come to my rescue? Right? Why does he allow me to fight all by myself? I feel so alone. I gave him the best room in this house. The very best room in this house. So he found his way to the sofa and then slept there because he was really tired. He can't go up to his room anymore. Now the next morning... He decided to inquire of the Lord about the happenings of the last two evenings. So quietly, he went upstairs and made his way to the elegant room where he had left Jesus. He knocked on the door and uh, the door opened and he said, Jesus, Lord, I don't understand what's happening. For the last two nights, I have had to fight the demons away from my door while you laid up here sleeping. And he asked, don't you care about me, Jesus? Did I not give you the very best room in this house? The the biggest room in this house? The most beautiful in this house? And you see, he could see Jesus' eyes. uh, He could see the tears building in Jesus' eyes. But continued on. I just don't understand, Jesus. I really thought that once I invited you to live in here with me that you would take care of me and I give you the best room in my house and everything. What more can I do? So Jesus spoke so softly. He said, my precious child, my precious child, I do love and care for you. I protect all that you have released into my care. But when you invited me to come here and stay, You brought me to this lovely room and you shut the door to the rest of your house. I am the Lord of this room, but I am not the master of this house. I have protected this room 
and no demon may enter here. And the young one said, Oh Lord, please forgive me. Take all of my house. It is yours. I am so sorry that I never offered you all to begin with. I want you to have control of everything. So with this, he flung open the bedroom door and knelt at Jesus' feet. Please forgive me, Jesus, for being so selfish. And Jesus smiled and told him that he had already forgiven him and that he would take care of things from now on. So that night, the man prepared for his bed. He thought, I wonder if those demons would, would come back. I'm so tired of fighting them each and every night. But he knew this time Jesus said that he would take care of things from now on. Along about that midnight, there was, a, there was banging on the door again. Banging on the door. It was very frightening this time. The young man slipped out of his room in time to see Jesus going down the stairs. He watched in awe as Jesus swung open the door. No need to be afraid. Satan stood at the door this time demanding to be let in. And Jesus said, what do you want, Satan? The devil bowed down low in the presence of the Lord and said, I'm so sorry. I seem to have gotten the wrong address. And with that, he and the demons all ran away. There is a moral to this tale. You see, this Christmas season, after Thanksgiving, Jesus wants all of you. Jesus wants all of you, not just a part. He will take all that you give him, but nothing more. If you just want to give him that room, he will take it. He will take care of it for sure. But he won't be the master of, of everything if you just give him part. Try to not keep a portion of it away from him. Give it all. Let Jesus take over and take everything. He wants you and he loves you. Now as we head headlong into Christmas, I challenge you, my friends. I challenge you to take the high road of surrender to the one who surrendered it all. Right? Perhaps the attacks are coming more and more each day. I don't know what's happening in your life, but perhaps. Why not let the Lord fight the battles for you? So you can sing for joy, shout for joy, serve with gladness, and give Him thanksgiving. You see, we have a God who is victorious. Amen? We have a God who is victorious. I have found that God made man simple. All of man's complexities are of his own devising. Again, I challenge you. I challenge you to take the high road of that surrender to the one who surrendered it all. God bless all of you. Shall we all rise this morning? Enter his gates, the Bible says, with thanksgiving. And come into his courts, meaning his presence, with praise. Amen. The Bible also says, in everything, give thanks. For it is the will of God for you. The Bible did not say, for everything. We thank God. We won't thank God for for cancer. We will not thank God for sickness. We don't thank God for those things. But the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. In whatever place and situation you are, you're in. The Bible says, just give thanks to Him. Not for, but in. Meaning it's a spirit of thanksgiving. You will have a tremendous relief in your life if you just praise Him. You become what you admire. Just admire the Lord because He's worthy. Can we do that this morning? Amen. Can we do that this morning?
enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. For the Lord is good. He is our shepherd and we are his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. God made us just to praise him and he will do the battle for us. Can we do that? Can we do that this morning? Can we have the joy of the Lord? If we receive the good news, then we have great joy. Amen. Turn your worries into worship. Your fears into faith. Amen. Your anger to adoration. That's the will of God for all of us. Can we just lift up our hands and respond? And Jesus, we love you. Yes, Lord, we love you, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Because you first love us. You are the wonder. Our hearts adore Jesus. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we want to open the door of our hearts to you and rule over us, rule over our lives. We give you the keys to every part of our lives. Lord, this morning, we want to walk in victory by giving you the keys to our lives so that you can give us the key to life. that we can have the authority over life because you have both the keys of death and life. And Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity and privilege as we respond to you, Lord. We give our lives to you so that, Lord, we can release the joy and peace in our lives. It is your will that we will give thanks in everything because, Lord, we can live in freedom. Lord, I speak this blessing upon your people today as we transition to Christmas. That we don't want you to be in a manger, but Lord, be in our hearts today. That we will not have seasonal joy, but consistent, continual joy. Hallelujah. 
Lord Jesus, rule and reign in our hearts right now. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul said, let Jesus take over and take everything. He wants you and he loves you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can we just appreciate Pastor Paul for that message? So I don't know if you guys know this, but if you feel like you want to listen to the message again or somebody wasn't here and they weren't able to listen to it, you can always direct them to our YouTube channel. We have all our sermons there for you guys to share, to repost, to send to your friends and your family. And with that said, as we prepare our tithes and offerings, can I just ask the ushers to come forward? Just going to receive our tithes. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for always providing for your people. We thank you for the way that you are able to utilize these gifts, these funds, because they belong to you in the first place. God, we ask that you would be honored. We ask that you would be glorified. We ask, Lord, that we would give with a cheerful heart, Lord. And all God's people said, amen. morning. Just kidding. Your Jesus workout. We're so blessed to have you guys here. Thank you guys. We have some things upcoming. Don't forget to join us next Sunday. We have an awesome message and a special, special number that we're excited for. So bring your friends, bring your family. How many of you guys excited for the Christmas season? Yeah? 
All right. Jesus, we thank you, God, for your birth. We thank you, Father, for the way that you continuously touch our hearts. Lord, that you continually speak through your people, Father. We just ask, oh God, that you would continue to ingrain your message of love, of joy, of peace, of perseverance in our hearts, oh God. We ask, Father, that you would move in such a miraculous way. God, that we would see signs and miracles of your goodness, of your graciousness. Father, we love you. We ask that you would bless your people, bless your community, bless your church, God. Bless the San Fernando Valley as we continue to invite people into your church for your fellowship and for your glory, God. And all God's people said, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand every time, every time. individual prayer. Pastor Paul and the pastoral team would love to pray for you individually. God bless you guys. Hear it now, make it loud at the top of our lungs. If there's a sound breaking now, look for all that you've done. And now we're turning our, turning our hearts to you. And no, we'll never stop, never stop loving you. And this will be the best time.